Okay. Okay. So um, we are in on page Kuf Nun Zion and page one eighty seven. Eighty seven. Yes. Yeah. One eighty seven and Kufnun Zayin. Hashabbos mevateas es chidush haolam. Shabbos is the expression of the renewal of the world. What does that mean? Kedem lahavin meat mitzios ze nosif hesber bedvarim. To understand a little bit of this, we have to add um, a an explanation. Hayesod gadol shul Shabbos enu ba matet bitoy litziarat Hashem is barach balama. Shabbos is not here to give us. Um, the notion that Hashem created the world. This, yeah, we do say Zechner Zechel Bris Olam, we say that in Kiddush. We have uh Zechat Zisram as well, but it's not just about the testimony that God created the world. Interesting. This is an interesting theory. If we want to celebrate or commemorate God having created the world, then we would commemorate that with an act of creation, right? We would say, okay, today is the day we create, and we'd have all these little activities for kids. We would like, you know, animals and do plants, and we'd, you know, different. Was, we're trying to commemorate the Mas Ebrachis. Shabbos and we're dvarim kamonim balavatei et chiddush olam. Gomar kol olam kol mechudash kol rega chiddush gamor main ma'af is gamor. Shabbos is not about the creation of the world, but rather the constant chidush ba'olam. Constant process of renewal of the world. That it's not just a, a clockmaker's universe, God wound up the clock and let it go, but that he's constantly engaged in it at every moment. That's that's a thought that should bring us Yerat Shemayim. Tremendous amount of love that Hashem is always watching us. Um, uh, and he says, the Cholapachos, at least the the uh, the wisest of the ones among us, right? So the wisest of among of, of among the Goyim, mean, they're they're great scholars. Everybody understands God created the world, right? In other words, if you're denying that, you're not a Chacham. Forget about Jew or non Jew, right? The basic premise is the world is created by God, intelligent design, whatever. You want. However, you even argue otherwise? Yishina Sovrakach, Pasha Tipesh, he feels that, that arguing otherwise is stupidity because you look at the wonders of the Bria, it makes no sense. None of this could be an accident. It can't be, you know, the the the, the famous test of watching a monkey uh, type on a keyboard and maybe after uh, a series of, uh, you know, random letters, eventually sentences put out. You know, it's almost impossible for what, what exists. I was marveling the other day before we killed the fly um, that how how... You know, that no Chacham in the world, no one could reproduce that fly. Like, no one. That's such an insignificant creature, and then we smacked it. But no one could create it. And that's amazing. I mean, that, and, and in Kabbalah Homer, the whole world, the universe, et cetera, onward, now they're finding aliens. So it, it's never going to end. I mean, this is an endless universe. So um, like Elon Musk is an alien. He, we're here to live among us. Most of us. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but the point is that. That you have to be delusional to think otherwise. You should mistake the derech ha'ayin. Just look at your eyes once. You can't see that you can't see that you can't see that you can't see that you can't see Look at an eye. Look at one person's eye. That the, the incredible lens, the camera, right? That can instantly focus at many distances. You want to focus the highest end camera in the world at a, at multiple distances. You have to push a button to zoom and to expand the megapixels out, we can just look up and you can look at a distance, you can look close up and you don't need much. Again, there's when the eye gets tired and broken, you need amplification, magnification, but at its very design, it's it's the most wondrous camera that no one will ever be able to produce. This doesn't exist. Now, um, let alone a brain, let alone something more complex. Uh, so tov mishu chacham kazeh. Yeah, indeed, one someone who is a chacham of this nature. Yeah, so he's not going to necessarily um, see God in his eye. Someone understands that you need to step on the pedal, the gas pedal, to make the 
the, the car or an engine to make the car move. Yodea gam shehaayin roe rak mishum shum chuberet lamoach. He knows that the eye is connected to the brain. So the removal and that connection is is wondrous. The optic nerves and the flipping of the images, the and the hundreds of and the that millions of cones and rods and all that stuff that, that allows you to process and color and process the things that you're seeing. Um, what is going on in the eye and the brain is, is, is unfathomable. I think I one time gave a drush just about the eye. It's telling Krasatov what it means to be able to see. So that itself should cause, fill us with wonder. I remember Shapam Hayali Bezerega Shell Hasaga. I fell. And uh, what? Car, oh, car accident. And I, I broke my bones. It's interesting. I think he passed away in a car accident. Also. He wasn't a good driver. I don't know. Maybe he was just lucky. But anyway, um, but uh, so this is, and he talks about it. It's eerie. He kind of talks about cars a lot. But okay, so I was in a car accident. I broke several bones. I couldn't move. I can't get out. I can't get out. I need to go. I don't know why I'm crying. Why am I crying? I don't know. I can't move them. You have legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if the if the engine is 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 uh, severed from the right, the brain is severed from the legs, the break in the spinal cord. So then you can't walk anymore. So so that that aura that I had that moment, I actually was in a car accident once, and I had that realization um, because they made me stay put until they put me on board. It was like the protocol. It was like it's a, it looked severe enough. I was totally fine. They're like, don't turn your head. I'm like, this way or that way. You know? oh. But it's a serious thing. You don't want them moving. We take those CPR courses. You don't want to stabilize the head first thing. So, so I remember thinking like this is an incredible reminder of the fragility of life and how how, how remarkable it is the way it works. In Cain Zevaday Shalokim Borov Asas Olam God created the world. Ain Safik Bezet Gama Goyim Aminim Bekach. Everyone believes in this. Ma'ashu Goyim Ain Amasigimu Sheolam Menu Umitzil Shal Yesh Ma'ayim. What they don't appreciate is that this came from nothing. I mean, they, they haven't succeeded. Most of the Haim Tonim, it's not true. I mean, certain certain uh, streams of religions, they do kind of believe this. But Tonim Sha'olam, I know Talich Tamid, Ma'az Melam Hayav Olam Kadmon. That the world, there is a there is a thought that, at least a scientific thought, the world is sort of forever. Um, and that like, so, and like it existed before it, but obviously there has to be a beginning to it. So he's saying that one of the fundamentals of our Amuna is that there was a beginning. The beginning was God created the beginning. He created the gracious. And well, don't think about it too much. You dwell on it too much, you'll go crazy. I mean, he created the beginning. What was beforehand? What is Tov Avo? It's like a... Right, but what is it? I don't, it's hard to even think about what that means. So your head will spin. Yeah. Um, but that idea that there must have been um, a before Genesis, a a creature that evolved into another creature, evolved into another creature, which now there are many scientists and and religious theologians, religious Jewish theologians, who are saying that you could even square that with what the Ramban writes in Chumash, that the seven days of creation, six days of creation, are not necessarily days in terms of twenty four hours, but like the expansion of the universe over time. Those days could have been millions of years. And that Hashem encrypted. Yeah, Gerald Schroeder, Dr. Gerald Schroeder, right? I remember he spoke in Yeshiva for us several times. He's amazing. Listen to Shalim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he, so his theory is essentially that, that uh, the Big Bang is not a stira. In other words, God created this. God, it's not a contradiction. It's just who created it. Hashem created the world through this means. And then little by little, what did he do? So he he caused... Um, the, he caused the evolution of those species through that, but it took millions and millions of years. And that's what that's one theory. The other theory in, in, within the Jewish svarim is that 
Shem encrypted um, into the world fossils and things like that to make it look like there was age because that's part of the beauty of the world. Why do you give us trees? It's beautiful, right? He created, he created age also. There are different theories of what there is, but it doesn't have to be a steer with, with our emuna that Hashem created the world, right? It, it all fits in. Um, the fact that the six days are not are not quite days fits in with Einstein's uh, um, uh, theory, relativity and the expansion of the universe because, because days, you know, millions of years ago would have been, would, would have, would, would have, been the equivalent of millions of years, right? In, in a day. So that's that's another possibility. So um, by our calculation, but that but according to some, Ramban was I thought right, 57, 8, right, 83. So according to the sun, that only goes up to back to um post-creation, post Adam, after Adam and Chab are created. Before that point, it might have been million, it might have been millions and millions of years. Of, of Christian. That's why the Gemara says, don't try to interpret. There are three things we don't darshan in public. Mishnah. Mishnah says we don't talk publicly about three topics. One are matters of a riot. We teach that between Chatan and Kala privately, right? One, we don't teach in public Maisa Bracious. Um, we only small individual conversations. And then Basim Kava, the secret of the chariot, we don't even touch at all. It's written in two different areas. It's the, it's the it's the chariot, the different animal heads. And it's the secret of that's the secret of Navua. If you want, if we understood that, it would be the secret of problems. We don't talk in public. Like like when they do matters of matters of sexuality should not be darshaned in public. It should be small groups. Creation in general terms, yeah, but to delve in specifically into what's really going on is very dangerous. Great heresy, right? Uh, so we we can teach it and learn it, but it has to be done smaller, smaller, uh, individual level or small groups, right? The Gemara mentioned has been standards. One is a modesty issue, and then the other two are going to bring you to either radical or heretical thoughts. Think about what happened to Elisha and Avuya. He saw something in the truth of the universe, and it he couldn't handle it. One of the, right, Ben Zoma, Ben Azai, Elisha Ben Avuya, and Rabbi Akiva. One of them died, one of them went crazy. One of them became a heretic, and the other one lived. Only Rabbi Akiva lasted, and they were all Gedolei Torah. They were all great leaders. Well, how did that happen? Because sometimes, as Jack Nicholson said, you can't handle the truth, right? It's a little too much for us. Yeah, we don't learn about Maestro Mechav at all. We don't mm -hmm. teach that stuff. Exactly. Right. 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 But we... Right, the, it's the secret of the, the chariot. It would be the the, it would be the secret of the universe, meaning it's, it's everything. It's, it's encrypted in the secret of the universe. Merkava is usually we refer to the way in which the screen of divine presence is experienced by man. It's a chariot. So my God is sort of riding through this world, and then we experience him in different ways that are physical, like chesed, gura, sodho, netzach, right, tiferet. Then Malchut would be Chachma bin Adat, Malchut on top. So this would be uh, sort of Kabbalistic, uh, Kabbalistic uh, ideas, meaning secrets of how the world works, of how everything, secrets of, of the interaction with God. Um, it's the word, the word for. Um, anyway, we, we'll not talk about it now, but you could look, you could look it up. We, we do read the Masrikha in the Haftarah, um, but uh, we don't really darshan it in public. There are stories of kids who were born without the thing, right? They understood yeah. things. And they were too. They had to go and and and, and fix something because he was, uh, you know, too on fire with whatever this stuff was. The electricity flowed through him. Apparently, uh, I imagine there are individuals in the generation who understand this stuff, but they're sort of secret milkmen and they're walking around. No one knows who they are. Right? Yeah. I, I can't help you. You can you can read you can read our Ravari Kaplan's books on Kabbalah and meditation, but I don't understand those books. They're out there. Okay. So anyway, um, here's the point. Right? The Maya Bracious, they have different theories in the world of what exactly took place. On a very simple level, God created the world. Um and he was the beginning of mitzvahs of existence. Existence did not exist before him. And therefore, he is the mitzvahs. Therefore, everything that exists is the will of God. Now, that's the 
point do you want to get to? If God willed everything into existence, everything only is here because he willed it to exist. Right? And we have a hard time with this because like, you, know, you create something, you're like, I hate that car that I built. I wish I built a different car, or I, you know, I, I, I uh, put together my sukkah, I'm going to do it differently next year, or child, uh, <laughs> what did I do with that? <laughs> but we, we, we think like this, right? Like, because we would like a do-over. And God doesn't need that. So it's hard for us to constantly, even though there is a medrash in Gracious Rabbah that says that Hashem Sheva Olam, that God created worlds, destroyed them, created worlds, destroyed them, created worlds, destroyed them. And some say this is the dinosaur bone thing. He created all these universes and destroyed them. And we're in the seventh iteration, which is the final one. Um, and my Rabbi Rabbi J.J. Shakter used to say, why did Hashem do over? That doesn't make mistakes. So why did he have to destroy a world? So the answer, you could say either that we let him down or, or you know, the creations are them, or Hashem wanted to model for us that you can start over. Just a very, and when do we read these matters? Then we go and we read Parshish Precious the moment we finish. There's no we Finish, we're done, we start over again. And that matters in the beginning of Precious. It's a powerful idea. But even the modeling of that is part of the design. Modeling of humility is part of God's design. Everywhere you find God's godless, says the Medrash, you find his anivus, his humility. That's not because he's weak or limited or incapable. It's because God's modeling for us. He's creating the notion of humility. So it's a um, it's it's that every single concept that exists is Ratz Hashem. Uh, Moshe Lib Sassifer was once asked by his Talmud, why did God create the notion of, um, of heresy? Why did God create the fact that some people don't believe in God, right? Why create that? So, so he responded, he said, because if you're walking down the street, you see an ani, a poor person, you shouldn't say, oh, God will help you. In that moment, you have to suspend belief in God for half a moment, to pay and, and help out. That's why the that's why denial of Hashem it has to exist as well, because otherwise people wouldn't do anything. I was saying something mm -hmm. profound. Actually, the author, Rabbi Lavage, says this. If you were so aware of God's reality and his will, you would do nothing. Because there would be nothing else. You'd have no motivation. You'd have no need. It would all just be Hashem, which is fine. But what about the fact that not everyone lives on that level and you need to form chasada and you need to build worlds and institutions yourself? So we have to kind of put a veil over our eyes to pretend as if we don't really see God all the time. Because otherwise, the world would, uh, would, would, would be, um, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to function uh, on a practical level. I, I imagine that's what it was, right? They were all light. Their whole bodies were light. So what does that mean, all light? That means that there was nothing else than Hashem, right? Yeah, until, I mean, they were created. They were like uh, no different than angels in that sense, right? They were just doing Hashem's will. Um, but then after the chait, their skin changed. Um, and then it became like other like nails, right? Like some sort of other... Right, and what are nails? Nails reflect light on Moti Shabbos. You got to take that of the Gan Eden, we reflect the light of paradise we once had. Three Nachmas is there. Agoi Mufka Mishvisa Mufka Mishabbos. So, if you don't have Shvisa, if you don't have the mitzvah of Shabbos, if you don't have Shabbos, what does that mean? He exists in a world of existence. But he doesn't know the secret of Yesh Me'ayin. He just knows that it always is. The world always was and always will be. That's the notion if you don't believe in Shabbos. You don't have the concept of the world once wasn't and now is. If he was to say, well, I'm not going to love this world because what's going to, because it's just God, right? So then his whole world is gone. Because he doesn't exist anymore. That's also for him. Right? So he's not allowed to testify to the complete nullification of self other than Hashem. Because fundamentally, they don't really have that. They don't have, to have the mitzvah, so they don't have that belief. I don't know what you're going to say. The belief of the mitzvah come first. But basically, they don't live in a world that was once nothing. Right? The, that's actually to not realize that there was a beginning. 
is to think that you don't really, you know, that that, that ultimately, you know, ultimately that uh, that there's no real real presence of God constantly, right? Because it was always maybe it's just another stage of evolution, right? Even if something created something, maybe there's just another evolved point. There has to be a point in which evolution didn't exist, even if you believe in it. There has to be a point in which Hashem said there was nothing and He created something. It has to start there. It has to. The, the false of evolution is not the notion that it happens. False it is that it, that the very beginning happens. There has to be an initial act of creation, right? and that's the difference he's he's highlighting. Here. Okay, Shabbos all made the stand out. On Shabbos we stand before the king. I might have thought a person is afraid of the base of Mikdash. Says, you shall observe the Shabbos and fear my Mikdash. What does that mean? Shmir of Shabbos and Mora bin Mikdash. Observing the Shabbos is parallel to awe of the Mikdash. Just as Shmira is said by Shabbos, observing the Shabbos, regarding the Shabbos, Lo Shabbos at Tamiz Yar, you're not afraid of Shabbos. Only Mishia is here on Shabbos. Av Mora Mora Mikdash, Lo Mikdash at Tamiz Yar, only Mishia is here on Mikdash. Okay. So number one is Chazal are saying this. Let me see. I'm going to translate. But... It's a bright. Ramot. Yeah, we're here. We're here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll translate what he's saying here. So he quotes the Gemara, the Brisa in Yivamos, and says, "Anyone who, what does it mean? You might have thought you should fear, right? That that we have fear of the Mikdash." Pasuk says, "Observe my Shabbos and fear the Mikdash." And my 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 Beit Mikdash or Beit Knesset. So he so the, the Madras juxtaposes the awe we have for Hashem who created the world, created the Shabbos, and the awe we have for the creator of the Mikdash. So Rashi says there, Lo Mishabas Damizari the Lok Sive Mora, Khomar Keshem, uh Shemeha Shabbos Adam Enamis Yare, just as a person is not fearful of Shabbos, rather fearful of the creator of Shabbos, Shumlo Kibam Sivoy al Mori Shabbos. We're not supposed to have awe of Shabbos, right? That's what the Medrash is saying. It's a fine point that shows. Alex Shabata Sham Hoderika the Mihirat Shamaim. It's when you experience Shabbos, you are filled with awe and fear of Hashem. So to the base of Mikdash. Not, I'm not afraid of the of the building. I'm afraid of the master of the house. Right? That's what fills me with awe. Is that is that this is God's location. The Shrina is present there. The difference between the base of Mikdash and Har Sinai, by the way, is that Har Sinai was. Was a was a makam of giloy shchina in that moment, whereas Hakadosh Baruch Hu shchina is always in the spot of the base of mikdash, but it's not the mikdash itself; it's the spot that God is always there. So when you have more in mikdash, it really means, says the Medrash, you have fear of God. Okay, that's Rashi. Then you have the opinion of the Yireim. It's interesting. If all this the side part that's not in there, the Baal HaYireim also one of the many mitzvahs. He he counts the mitzvahs in the Torah. He says there's a mitzvah of Moray Shabbos, which is counted among the 613. So according to Rashi, 613 commandments do not include fearing Shabbos, right? We have a mitzvah of fear Hashem. According to the Yireim, we have a positive commandment to fear Shabbos, to have awe of Shabbos. It's one of his, he wasted one of his 613 on that. Now he has to spend it. He has to not waste it, use it. Now he has to, right, right. Each one has to figure that out. Yeah, it's not. So it's not. It's not fear. Good point. It's awe. It's awe. It's yira. It's yira. Right. Pachad is fear. Pachad is fear. Pachad piton. And there was yesterday at Minchamar. I was talking about a different thing called anxiety, which is something we only speak about in the first Baruch what is fear is trembling, like someone's going to kill me, I'm afraid. Or is inspired, I'm in the presence of a Gadol Hador, I'm terrified, but I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. If you were in the presence of a Moshe Feinstein, you'd be terrified, right? But you wouldn't, you wouldn't be afraid he's going to hurt you, right? But you would be terrified, maybe, you know, be like, 
you know, you wouldn't be like, uh, Rabbi, uh, uh, we're out of uh, yarmulkes in the yarmulke bin. You wouldn't say it's Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. So um, there's a certain level of awe. So um, what is what is anxiety? Where is anxiety? Anxiety is, um, and this is Rev Ezra, B uh, Rev Ezra Bick writes this in uh, his parish on Shemona Esther. You get it, it's in English, it's fantastic. Um, he says that, why do we say Magain Abraham, the first prophet of Shemona Esther, shield of Abraham? Avram Avinu, actually, the word Magain appears in Avram's uh, speech to Hashem. Avram is turning to Hashem, and he says to him, after he conquers the four, the four kings and the five kings, well, four, four and the five kings, and after uh, all that he had been through, right, and Malkit Tzedek encounters him, he turns to Hashem, and he says, he says, I'm, I'm afraid, right? He expresses his fear, and Hashem says, he doesn't say I'm afraid, Hashem says, don't be afraid, I will be your schar, I will be your magain. So the Medrash has three approaches as to what that means. What does it mean, Hashem will be the magain, for Abraham. So there's uh, two opinions that uh, that come up. I think it's Ula as its first two opinions, or maybe it's, I don't remember if it's Ula or whoever it is, but someone has the first two opinions, uh, maybe or Akiva, but the first two opinions are that um, that he was afraid of perhaps, perhaps he had used up, he, perhaps that, that, that the, that the, the enemies, the children of the armies that he killed were going to kill him. Or perhaps he was worried that he had killed the wrong people and some of them were actually righteous. And then the Chum said he was worried that he used up his Zuhuyot and that he would lose his reward in the world come. And then Hashem says, you get your scar. What is Magain doing? Now, Magain is saying, don't be afraid of things that might happen. Fear is something that's real. It's right now. It's around. The army is attacking. That's not a distant uh, fear. That's, that's a real present fear. What is, that's pachat. What is anxiety? Anxiety is, it's good now, but what's going to happen when there's another election, right? Life is good now, but what happens when I lose my job, right? Or or I can't get married. I'm not a, what if I can't, uh, you know, get along with someone else? Like everything is fear. The foot, the other foot's going to drop. Yeah. And people who don't have He has a physiological component, sure. <clears throat> right. Right. And, and what's interesting is he's saying that the first Brahmach Monastery is dealing with anxiety. Which is a fascinating mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. like, Shem, you are the shield against the things that mm -hmm. Could happen. I don't know. I didn't say this the other day. It was about mitzvah the other day. But one of the things that I, well, I wanted to say is one of the things that we talk about is Hashem protects us from the things we don't even know are happening, which is that's really the magain, the anxiety of the things we don't know, right? And we talk about the uh, serenity prayers, the things I can't know the difference in the things I can change and can't change. It's a beautiful idea, a beautiful concept. But that's exactly what anxiety is things I can't affect and change. Why are you worrying about that? Have no impact on you. So Harish Baruch was working the scenes, behind the scenes, and we're saying Modim, the Al Nisecha Shemachoyimana, well, the miracles that happen to us every day. When's the last miracle happened to you? Not today, not every day, maybe. It was every day. You just don't know about it. What? You didn't. So it's a miracle that you didn't know about, but it happened. And you got your Neshama back. You got your Neshama back. It's a miracle that you didn't know, but it happened. So I thank Hashem for the being magain of the things that, so I was going to say this about Mitzvah, I didn't say it, but that the, on Shabbos 145, Mincha, early Mincha, and the power in the community shuts down, like the whole block. I don't know if you lost power, because everybody's using their AC on the weekend, and it was really hot. So so they unplugged it. They're like, we can save money here, we don't get your garbage on Thursday, it's great. So, but no, it, it crashed. So we get power to like five or so, and I realized this is about Mitzvah at five o'clock here in the shul. And I was so, I was worried, do I go tell the family, do I not? I know that the party planner was here and, and ComEd is on the street. And anyway, they got power at basically three. So I was going to say, but I forgot to say it, that, that Hashem does miracles for you even you don't know. You didn't even know you had to worry about the fact you didn't have power for your son. That was a bracha also. So maybe, maybe instead of worrying about things we don't know, maybe it's a bracha that we don't know about it. 
Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. yeah. Right. But all the postmodernists, like they, they say it's important to know the un, to know what you don't know. Now I know that comes from a place of humility, but I think knowing what you don't know is going to create a lot of anxiety. Right? I think knowing the things that are happening is really frightening. You watch the news cycle for like a week. The reason why people like vacations, they uh they don't watch the news. Okay, so Rashi says it's we have more of mikdash, but you're not really fear fearful of shots, fearful of the boss of shots. And then the Uraim says, no, there's a mitzvah to fear to have awe of Shabbos. And what does that mean? That the Tira has to be also on Shabbos, that I fear the Mikdash, and I have awe of the Mikdash, and I have awe of, Hashem, of Shabbos. So all the words of Chazal, Mashemira, Hamura, Mashemira, Amur Shabbos, it's not Shabbos at Tamis Yare, Elam and Mishi, Israel Shabbos. You're not worried about Shabbos, but you're worried about the, your, your, your have awe or fear of the one who warned you of Shabbos. But Mura, Mura, Mikdash is not the Mikdash, rather it's the one who who told us about the Mikdash. So the, the approach is, is the Yura an actual Yura or is the Yura of a proxy Yura for, for God? So um, so that's, one is the Yerayim and one is Rashi. Okay, so that's an important machlokas to be aware of. I don't know why he's bringing it here. Let me just see. Maybe that's why they cut it out of the English. <laughs> but but it's fascinating machlokas to be aware of, yeah. Um, so, on a rechokim mit l'tayr l'shayr es nas v'z mikdash, we have a very hard time understanding the more bit mikdash of standing before God. Where Malchus is recognized in all of its grandeur, its beauty, its greatness, its its, its form, its external physical form. Those are Mashari, the Kohanim, the Tahorim, the Hanagim Yuchedet, the special conduct of, of purity in the base of mikdash. We're reading Yoman now, Mesech's Yoman and Mishnayas. How many times the Kohen Gadol has to go in the mikvah, out of the mikvah, right? Wash his hands, wash his feet, change his clothing, white, go back and forth five times, mikvah ten times, washing his feet, feet, his hands, right? Or maybe an eleventh time when he leaves again. And the point is that this idea of of how zahir, how careful you have to be about tahara, by if kares, if you enter this mikdash in status of tuma, that's um that is that is one element of malchus, base of mikdash. Is has its own halachos of of how we conduct ourselves there. Kohen comes to the base has to wear certain clothing. Kachim can only be handled by certain people at certain times. So he says that's what Shabbos is. According to the Yerayim, that there is an awe of the mikdash itself is also an awe of Shabbos. Hamavdu and Koshchal means there's a malchus, there's a kingship, there's an experience of royalty that I am living in on Shabbos, and I have to have all fear of Shabbos. Am Yisrael v'galuto v'ateh machu shamayim kol am v'ateh machu dor shamayim. Okay, so when Shabbos comes and everything changes, you are now a Jew who stands before the king on Shabbos itself. We skipped over. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. He doesn't go into it. In Fine. So during that moment. On Shabbos, you stand before the king. Amsterdam, London, Paris, right? Let's say you go into the streets um, where there are Jews in Amsterdam, London, Paris, and any place. There is, we bring with us, we're supposed to bring with us at least, that's the job of, the, of those who carry the torch of the Torah. Hashpa shona halavush acher, asafa shona. The language is different. The the garments are different. Sheifut sheifot shona. The the aspirations are different. Shenichnas rechol vayudim. You go into the 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 street where the Jews are. Shabbos kiu nichnas mutina acheres. It's like you're going into another place. Luma acheret. Luma shel atzula lavushim begadim yuchadim ochlam ochlam meshuvach yoter different foods. They speak differently to one another. Just as the Jewish people have their own distinct cultures, right? 
and everyone has their own culture, of course, so too Shabbos has its own distinct culture. Don't speak on Shabbos like you speak about Chol. Don't, don't talk about the stock market. Don't talk about your business. We were talking in the Rambam this morning regarding the Chol Shabbos. You can go and you're not allowed to talk about um, what you're going to do in your field, plant, cultivate, etc., harvest, but you're allowed to um, scare away rodents that are eating your crops. It's not not an unusual way to play class. Like other things outside of shops. A very physical, on a, right? So on a very on a halachic level, a ver davar means. You don't talk about the chol. You don't do physical things that are prohibited. Melacha Shabbos and beyond. Meaning, Melacha Shabbos are aser. Those are thirty-nine melachos. Then there's a whole list of items you don't do on Shabbos because they're not like Shabbos day. Like you don't run on Shabbos. You don't uh, run to a mitzvah. Right? So why don't why are we allowed to run to do a mitzvah? Why you're not allowed to measure on Shabbos? You want to put a me make a measuring cup. You can't use it. But if you want to measure your mikvah to see if forty saw, you're allowed to. You're not allowed to measure on Shabbos, but if you want to measure your matzah to make sure you're eating enough, you're allowed to. Why are you allowed to measure a mitzvah? So the answer is, it's chafatzecha asurim. Your desires are prohibited, but chafzei shamay mutarim. The desires of God are allowed. Why? Because you're in the presence. It's God's day. And on God's day, there's a certain awe. There's a certain fear. That's the fear. The fear is that this is not it's not your home. Imagine you walk into a really gorgeous home. You wouldn't just start like moving things around. I, I went to visit home of one of the famous um um one of the great famous uh uh you know uh, billionaires uh and we we're there with a group of rabbis and the whole room of chagals one room and there was a uh, this room and there was a Picasso on the wall it was really cool and, and and then there was a then there was another room that had a big tv screen someone was well, one of that one of the workers there was watching a basketball game or a football game or something like that and then he took us to the judaica library ancient sfarim it was a commission by a Henry VIII the Bomberg edition printing press was just coming to existence and he had one of the copies of that Shas Henry VIII commissioned the Shas because he wanted to justify his divorce so he could marry his, his mistress and Poland right her name is so, so, he, so the church didn't accept divorce so he went he said the Jews accept divorce so how did he prove it he, 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 he had to make a Shas he had his own shots, so that was actually one of the finest prints. So he has a copy of so this. Yeah, but, yeah, to justify. And then he commissioned the shots, which is great. So we got this new printing called Bomberg Edition, and and that was basically. So when we were there in this house, this house was the person who was taking us. They said introduced the owner and said, um, since that edition, they had the Vilna shots was the next best selling Gemara of all time. Now the owner of this house is responsible for the widest publication of any Gemara in history. It's a Shonstein edition. So it was his house. So that was a very cool thought. So we were there in that place. I remember thinking, all right, so you had values. You had paintings and things like that. Okay, we well, had a basketball game. Interesting. We went to see this amazing treasure of books. He has a collection of books. It was really special. Like he really values old Svar. Um, not even the, the, the fancy silver stuff. That was relevant to us. Anyway, what I was thinking when I was there was that like, I was so careful. Like, I don't want to bump into any. Like, everything I've bumped into, I can't afford. <laughs> like, I knock over any. So I was just like, the whole time, like this. So I remember that type of era. Not that it's trepidation, but that type of awe, respect. It's like it's like Shabbos. You enter Shabbos, you have to have that kind of, I'm in the Makam HaMikdash. I'm in this place where can't even think and talk about things I normally do. You wouldn't have a conversation that you would maybe have casually with a buddy if you were in a house like that. You'd even think about your words beforehand. Maybe. Not because we respect well, because we sense there's something, it's 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 scary. It's like there's something about it, right? And Kaba Homer, if that's a, a, just by a rich person's house, right? What about God's house? What about Shabbos, which is God's house? Our words, imagine as the bell rings for Shabbos, just all of a sudden your debor changes. And that's that's his description here of of a um of of a, what hour. Okay. We'll stop here, but I don't know why the um book didn't match.